So good morning, good morning, and good morning, guys. Welcome to another fabulous episode of Exit Strategies Radio Show. Hey, I'm your, I'm your host, Colin J. Millett, broker and owner of Exit Realty Low Country Group in beautiful, guys, North Charleston, South Carolina. Hey, if this is your first time listening to this show, you, sir, ma'am, are in for a treat because our mission here is very simple. That is to empower our community through financial literacy and real estate education, guys. We are legacy building. And today is no different. So guys, I'm super duper excited to introduce to you someone who is killing the game. All right. He is none other than Mike Headley. He's a broker in North Carolina. He is the host, the host guys of the Healy real estate show. All right, guys, look, so he is doing it. He is big on everything that we like to make sure that we focus and practice on here, which is his philosophy is to put the client first in all endeavors from A to Z. He focuses on educating and sharing stories of realtors, investors, and other entrepreneurs. That is what he does. So guys, join me. Let's give, quote unquote, the slow clap and let's speed it up for none other than Michael Healy with the Healy Real Estate Group. My man, how are you doing today? Oh, man, brother, first of all, I want to say thank you and thank you for your viewers for allowing me to come on this platform and share my story and what we have to offer. Drop some jewels. Awesome. Well, look, I don't want to steal too much of your thunder, but your resume is extensive. So we want to make sure that we let people know um, in the process of us having this conversation today, as much as they can learn about you in the time that we have allotted. So if you don't mind, tell our listeners who you are and what got you started in the business. Uh, Mike Hitley, uh, again, you know, you just now since a second ago, uh, owner broker of the Hitley Group Realty, host of the Hitley Group Real Estate Show. We've been in the business 15, I've been in business 15 years now. And what got me started in the real estate back in 2000, uh, what, four or five, I was just trying to do the investor thing, you know, try it like wow. everyone else don't, don't know what's going on. Uh, looking at the uh, Carlton sheets, uh, <laughs> the infomercials late at night and saying, oh, wow, yeah. I want to get into the game and I want to be able to flip properties. And actually a friend of mine, we found a piece of property and we went ahead and flipped it. Well, let me back up. The first deal that I tried to flip, didn't really make no money off. Actually, we lost on it. Second deal, flipped that, put that on the market, and it went under contract for like the seven days. And once it went under contract, it was like a quick closing, cash closing. And I looked at the HUD one settlement statement and I said, man, we, the, the broker made $8,500 in less than a few weeks. I'm like, man, I said, I, I think I need to get my license. Let me couple that with my investing skills. So mm -hmm. that sparked me wanting to go to real estate school to get my real estate license. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. So you operate a group and y'all guys, you focus primarily in what is referred to as the triad area. It's like a triangle, if you will, in, in somewhat in the middle of North Carolina. Um, you know, you guys just, and, and for our listeners, if you're not familiar with that particular area is just right now with development and growth op opportunities. Seemingly everything, everybody is somewhat targeting to be there. So you kind of in the middle of everything. But if you don't mind, tell our listeners kind of, you know, broad areas or the areas that you guys serve throughout there. And then what is it that you're seeing in your market as far as activity? Well, first, let me do a little correction now, brother. Okay. Yeah, I operate a brokerage, right? And <laughs> brokerage, right, brother? Yeah. So, okay. yeah, we, all right. Full fledged brokerage, right? Where we, we have specialized apartments, property management, residential. We have a commercial division. Okay. And then also, we just don't work in the triad. We are part of all the boards. We're Charlotte Market. Actually, my highest listing was in the Charlotte Market. The Charlotte Market and the just that our home office is in Greensboro, the triad area. And we mm -hmm. are in the Raleigh Durham Market as well. And I would say, you know, you asked what was the question again? I'm sorry, the last part. So what are you seeing as far as activity across your markets? Okay. Well, what we see is, I'm quite sure in your market as well, we had a large amount of investors coming into town, right? And the properties, mm -hmm. turn them into yeah. rentals because I guess they, the cash flow wasn't as high in the return versus investing in the kind of stock market. So we had mm -hmm. a lot of hedge fund companies coming in and as well as local investors as well. I say we still... Have that market, which slowed up dramatically, but there's still some bite there. 
Mm -hmm. Which I told you that we put a couple of properties on the market over the weekend. Actually, on Friday, in one we got thirty three offers on, priced aggressively. That's that's Uh, insane. Exactly. Right now, what's going on? They call. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? We told them we still haven't made a response yet. And you brokers out there, when you get, if you ever had an opportunity to get in that situation, which feels so good, but sometimes it can be a little overwhelming because the amount of calls and then the instructions that you give the brokers on what to follow when you're submitting an offer. And mm-hmm. let's face it, one thing about me, brother, I don't know, can I be real on the show? Because I'm real on mine, right? Look here, you, can, you, can be, you can be I real can on the show. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So my point, broker agents, they don't like to read, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it was like, read the MLS, the, or the remarks, because you'll probably call the office with the same information. Hey, okay, what do I submit offer? Which email is mm-hmm. But anyway, so my point to that is that, yeah, we're in a good situation now because of the overwhelming amount of uh, offers we're coming in. So I say that to say in our market here, it's not hot, 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 high interest rates, but I say it's still hot, yeah. still hot, not cold, yeah, but still mm-hmm. hot. You know, it's funny. I was actually talking to uh, a few of one of my, particularly one of my agents here mm-hmm. in the office not too long ago, just kind of, mm-hmm. you know, sharing, you know, some of the things that we we see during this time. Mm-hmm. You know, there's always inventory that you don't quote quite see. And there's always op- and there's plenty of there's always plenty of opportunity, and that's right. something I know that you do very well in making sure that you know you as a company as well as the individual, you know, capitalize on. Correct. But you know, in a market like this, that unknown inventory is oftentimes daunting to the unseasoned professional. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Well, you want me to comment now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I would say is, uh, uh, let, let me back it up to what got me into the game. And this is going to spill into the response here is that, you know, I got in the game 07, 07 when the financial heat was hit, the crash, right? Yep. Yep. So, you know, thanks for the man upstairs that gave me direction to align myself with a ton of institutions and banks. Right. Mm-hmm. So that kind of catapulted me because I sold a ton of foreclosures. So it spills into what you're saying now, what they call that shadow inventory. Right? Mm-hmm. And I believe that it does exist. There's because a lot of times I think if you ride in your community, you'd be like, that house is still available. That house yeah. still, but that house, this empty house over there. Mm-hmm. And, and I do think that a lot of people when, when it was hot, literally six months ago, kind of bit off more than they can chew. And I think that the think they'll pay some of that, pay that price as we come into 2023 deep into it. So that will be a part of that shadow inventory, which I do still think that it, there's a lot out there. You know? mm-hmm. yeah. That's interesting. You should say that. Mm-hmm. Um, I literally, I, pa- I drove somewhere. I passed a house that was vacant and, mm-hmm. you know, you can tell it's vacant, you know, obviously mm-hmm. they'll, they'll run down a little bit. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, wait a minute. And I've driven past the house a, a, a number of times, and I think I've been watching it or seeing it, you know, my peripheral as I go by. And I'm like, wait a minute, that thing is still vacant. So I wonder what's going on with it. And that's, that's the right. opportunity that, that sometimes, you know, people and agents oftentimes don't realize that, hey, wait a minute, we'll find out what's going on with this property, because that may be an opportunity for you to pick up a property. That may be an opportunity for you to help someone, you know, market or sell a property. Because if they can't afford to keep it or they're not there to maintain it and, you know, they need some help, then if you don't reach out to them, sometimes people don't know to reach out to someone else, seek some assistance and some guidance themselves. But you being an agent, I'm going to swing back around to something, my man, that you just saw, talked about. You worked in the foreclosure market in Correct. the, you know, quote unquote, back during the recession. What are you seeing now that's similar to that time period? But what also are you seeing that's different? Well, I can say that, uh, well, clearly, I think when that happened, it caught everybody off guard. Like nobody knew that came out of nowhere, right? I think everybody was unprepared for that. So whereas though now there's a lot of regulations and guidelines in place, uh, as Mm -hmm. well as a lot of the financial institutions, they'd rather work things out with you because they go through that legal process. That's costly for them, right? Attorneys. Mm -hmm. and, And so they said, we'll rather do a short sell, some kind of hardship. We'll put it on the back end. Like you have mm-hmm. any money, we want to work this out. We do not want to go through this mm-hmm. foreclosure process, right? Mm-hmm. So, in terms of your question, what what am I seeing now? Don't see uh, as as much activity. Again, you look at your county courthouse because that's always a key indicator. Hint, hint, people out there, bro- agents, brokers, uh, yeah. you kind of see what that list looks like, and it's not as much because I do think that. You know, institutions are trying to work it out. You know, you behind a month. I think they're on top of you. They're not going yeah. to let you get behind two and three, four months. Mm-hmm. Listen, you behind a month, 
what can we do? Do we lower these yeah. payments? Do we need to work mm-hmm. out some kind of refinance? What do we do? Because we don't need you to get too far behind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, true, but I would true. say to answer your question, it's not as much active, but we still see tricklets. You know, you pay attention to see MLS, you know, you go see mm-hmm. HUD Home Store and some properties there, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and you'll start mm-hmm. seeing, okay, little small bits mm-hmm. of um, versus three this week. It was six now, six this week. It was nine, mm-hmm. it's nine next week, you know, but mm-hmm. it's, it's nowhere near of an avalanche. Like, and I don't, and I personally, I don't think it'll be like that anyway, Um, because I do think that there's a lot of investors locally and as well as uh, internationally kind of licking their chops. they like, okay, we ready. We got the money. <laughs> so as soon as we see anything, you know, like I said before, I call everybody of God. Now people, yeah. it's unfortunately, but people are preparing for the unfortunate for others is really bad because, you know, in, in bad times, that's when people really do well, you know? Yeah. So, you know, yeah, it, that it, was a little long winded answer. No, because that's what we want. We want, we want, that we want it. We want all the information. The exactly. Your gotcha. perspective. Yeah. But I'm going to say this because you talked about this. You know, oftentimes, you know, wealth, you know, people become wealthy during hard times. Correct. And, you know, they figure out during whatever time period, whatever else is going on, they figure out something that sets them apart, differentiates, and then they cat- use that and catapult to a much higher financial level. You know, they, they become very prosperous during that time. Correct. But you also said, and I, so I, I wanted to make sure we got that out for our listeners, because, you know, sometimes people think they, they have, you know, I mean, you get, you know, this limiting beliefs. We we are limited in our thought processes. We're limiting everything that everything we, we limit everything like you can't do that. You can't do this. Who said that? Who, who said that? So. You know, we want to change that mindset and, and that mentality for our listeners. But on the other side, you also said you said this differently than what I'm going to say it. But we all learn from the last time. So will we have a direct repeat? See, some people seem to believe that we're going to have a direct repeat. And this whole thing that happened back in 08, 09, you know, going into 10 is going to be the same thing all over again. And I'm pretty sure and correct me, Mike, if I'm wrong, but you definitely believe that's not going to be the case as well, correct? I don't think that. No, I think there'll be some prop, some distressed properties, but nowhere near is that avalanche. I'm talking about literally. If if you really take a look back, then 07, 06, 07, 08, 09, 010, you talking literally one block. You talking ten out of ten homes, six of them had for sale signs, right? Mm-hmm. I, and, and like I said, it caught people off guard. I keep saying that, but people were unprepared, didn't have the necessary cash flow. This time around, I think people will be ready before it even hits the market. Whereas, like I said, that short sell has worked out, or you'd be getting 1.9 million letters coming to your house. Hey, we'll, we'll buy it. You know, it's, boy, they'd be killing me with them. <laughs> so so you, know, you get them too. <laughs> man, I get them too. And I'm on this. I listen, I get my phone message, and, and they say, matter of fact, let me tell you a quick story on that. And, and this is for you viewers out there. The guys, the message says, hey, uh, hey, hey, buddy. You know, you got to warm you up. Hey, buddy, uh, we, we see you got this house on 123 Main Street. Um, uh, uh, no, we would love to buy it. Press skip if you want this message to stop, right? I know the game. Which, because what <laughs> happens is they have to acknowledge that, okay, if we're sending these text messages out, I got to give you the opportunity to stop it. Yeah, not skip, which you meant to say stop, S T O P, not S K I P. So I pressed stop, and automatically the system stopped it, right? Because uh-huh. if I would have said kept skip, they could have kept hitting me, hit me, hit me. So that's a little <laughs> nugget out there. But anyway, a lot of people will keep sending you letters. That with the letters on top of banks willing to work things out. On top of, I think it won't be an avalanche because institutions okay. do not want to get in the foreclosure process. So it won't be nowhere near as the, the crash back then. Then there's a lot of laws and guidelines in place, too, because, you know, you had a lot of mortgage lenders, or uh, mortgage companies was taking advantage of people, a uh, misdocument, mis- misdocument documents and not putting mm-hmm. the correct information. It was a lot of BS going on back then. That's, that's why you had what you had, you know. And that's fair. You know, you know, that's a conversation that, you know, I have oftentimes with other, you know, professionals such as mm-hmm. yourself, mm-hmm. you know, both on the real estate as well as on the mortgage side. That you know, we don't expect that again because right. you know we learn. So exactly. when you know the tales and you know 
all the analysis that that's taking place to look at that time period to see what was going on in the market. You know, I believe the builders have learned, you know, because, you know, when the market crashed, you know, way back when, builders had a plethora of inventory on the market. Now they're sitting on some inventory, but it's not on the market. You know, it's not like they have, you know, as many homes, you know, on the ground and that they're desperate to sell and then banks calling notes because that was also an issue as well that the banks started calling notes on builders, you know, you know, back during, you know, when, as the recession was beginning because they were uncertain and unsure and they were losing money on, on foreclosures. Correct. So, you know, now what I expect is that there's going to be these hedge funds, these investor groups, these mm -hmm. REITs that are going to come in and buy up packages of underperforming mortgages um, in order to try to reposition and stabilize and or to buy up the properties that may be quietly foreclosed on, if that makes sense. And I, I think that's what's going to happen, which will keep those homes from hitting the market mm -hmm. and otherwise negatively impacting pricing. Well, there's always correction and stabilization to take place. Correct. Fair. And, and is needed. It, it's yeah. needed. Exactly. You know, well, well, and, and it's like, you know, people talk about the, you know, the high interest rates. You, you had to because money was just too easy. It was too hot. Right. You, you have to cool this thing off. Right. Mm -hmm. So as a result, now it's actually is better for the buy rates a little bit more high, but now you're not so much in an extremely high bidding war. So, yeah, so I, I think that's the um, it, it was a good thing that, the, you know, the rates that increased up versus two point five. I know somebody in Baltimore. It was age a friend of mine's one of his clients. He must have brought this rate down. This guy got a one percent more. One percent was his mortgage. I was like, wow. I think the property is like four eighty five or something like that. One percent. Oh, that's oh, that's sweet. Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that's the easy payment. Yeah, yeah. 45, I think probably yeah, a nice size property too. So that's the lowest hey, interest rate I've heard of. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, you know, jokingly, but not, but as you talked about, you know, cool and rates raising the cool, because mm -hmm. we're, I mean, we're still experiencing inflation. I mean, shoot. Correct. You has got to finance a, a dozen eggs nowadays, man. Is eight, eight nine nine a carton. Huh? Eight, eight nine, 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 nine a carton. And, 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 that, and that's the healthy kind. Yeah, because I try to at least stay, you know, health as well. I try to be on that that side and to be real mindful. I wouldn't put in your body because I hear you talk about mindset. Like, and I don't and I know we I would love to go That's down right. that road because that is my that is the golden goose. Yeah. And so, you know, right now, you know, people, are, you know, we're experiencing this, but, you know, our economy just kind of ran away, injecting a bunch of money into our economy without some type of balance. It just created this everything just ramped up. And I mean, mm -hmm. you saw it in your market. We're seeing it and experiencing here. Home prices have escalated. I mean, I, I'm selling a house now that in two years time, I'm selling a house now that was bought low 300s. I'm selling it now in the upper 400s. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's only been on the ground for two years. I mm -hmm. mean, where, where do you see that kind of appreciation in the market? Correct. You know, that, that's obscene almost. Correct. Correct. But correct. correct. that's what the market did because the builder... Because of material costs, labor costs increases, all those things, they in the market, they were able to substantially increase the base price of the house. So the base price of that house now is almost $100,000 more than mm -hmm. what it was two years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. So are you seeing similar things in, you know, in your practice as well? Yeah, definitely. I, I was just going to touch on when you said the supply chain. It's, I wanted to talk about that a little bit. How yeah. you know the supply chain was just literally, literally at a standstill. I mean, because people don't realize that everything is literally interconnected, right? So mm -hmm. if Rob, Cindy, Erica, or Mike can't get the job to do the work to quote unquote chop down the trees so we can send it to the lumber yard, so the lumber yard can send it to make two by fours, and the two by fours make enough of them so the builder can purchase them. I mean, all of that plays a key role and just getting the construction material to the property, which stalls things. Right. I think mm -hmm. that demand was just so high that you couldn't like a lot of times with materials, you had to wait months, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. okay, this house will be built you know, about a year and a half. You're like, man, why mm -hmm. so long? Because yeah. that supply chain is just too rocky. But to answer your question, I said, it made me think about that when you said that far as just the cost of things, but to answer your question and, and I'll back y'all. Yes. It's kind of the same format. Where's the depreciation? Was this, which is, you know, ultimately real estate is the best asset class, right? I'm being biased yep. here. I know you mm -hmm. probably can. You know, I've always 
said is uh, the great thing about real estate, I break it down from a rental standpoint. Okay, you said you invest in the stock market and you invest uh, in other avenues, not tangible, right? Where's those? Yeah. that stock market? If right now, if I hope he doesn't, but if Biden and Russia gets into something, yeah, stock is plummeting, right? Yeah. But if Lisa ain't paying her rent, she out of there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, <laughs> so, oh, I'm raising these rents on you. I, got, I yeah. control that. I get to control mm -hmm. my asset class, right? Yeah. You no, know, based off what market rents are. So I like that much better. That's why I said, you know, real estate is the best asset class. But to answer your question, yes, not backyard. I mean, we all have seen this uh, high appreciation. Now, I will say, and I'm quite sure, you know, some listeners and you probably can attest to this, was though the seller paid two fifty for it. Now he wants to sell it for now. The market is saying three ten. Now he said, "I want three fifty for it." Now you just be you just being greedy. Yeah. Like, that's what you're doing now. Yeah. Right? You, you come on, like like like, like let, let's be real with ourselves. Now you're just being a little over too greedy. You know, yeah. one you're going to make a profit. Are right? you yeah. going to make a profit? And then you come back to the broker and say, "Why my house ain't selling?" Why why my well? Yeah. At the end of the day, yeah. price drives everything. We've done everything yeah. we could on our end. We, at, we said you need to be at 310, but you wanted to pick 350. Why? Because yeah. you painted the bathroom blue. I yeah. know. Yeah. That, that, don't, yeah. <laughs> that don't matter. Carolina blue. <laughs> Carolina blue. Carolina blue. Did these comps say 310? That's what these comps say. Where you get 350 from? All right? And they got it from because they said, so I got, oh, what Zillow said. Oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Zillow is there to inflate you so you can say, come on over here and do what you, you know, so we can do business together. Right. And it's not and I'm not knocking Zilla, but you overflating these prices here, you know, and then now the bro makes it hard for the broker because they got to prove themselves because they yeah. listen to these these other uh, these websites. But anyway, I digress. Well, you know, and you're on something there, man, because the reality is, is that, you know, we're often questioned by the consumer when we have the experience and they lack the understanding, you know, had this, you know, recently with, with someone, you know, trying to get them to, okay, look, this is what you need to be at on price based on the condition of your property. Well, similar situation, you know, and I'm like, look, you're not going to get what you're after. This is probably what our best case is going to be. Sure enough, we got the best case, but even though, quote unquote, not that I want to be right, but I surely don't want to be wrong per se, but we got to offer it that, but then you shun the offer because it wasn't what you wanted. Well, the market isn't going to pay you what you want. It's going to pay you what the market deems to be the value of your property. That's what the offer that you're going to get. And many times our consumers, <laughs> as you so eloquently put, they want to reject that. But you got the experience. You've been selling property and, you know, probably you've been doing this for 15 years. This might be the first house they sold. Or even right. still, they ain't, selling, they ain't selling a house as often as you are. So who has greater experience? They need to be listening to you, right? Well, can I elaborate on that? Yeah, please. Well, well, let me tell you who they're listening to. You're listening to uh, you listen to HDTV, right? Okay. You listen to HDTV, and you listen to the cousin, uncle, friend who sold the house six years ago, right? And he's giving you advice as well, right? So you listen to all these surrounding things. Cause let me back it up a little bit. Anytime I tell one of the brokers, I said, okay, well, you working with that buyer? Be mindful that you're not just a real estate professional psychiatrist mm -hmm. you might have to be a pastor one day you might have to be a mediator you got you got to take away all these hats now ultimately you're a project manager because yeah. what happens is you have to deal with the emotional intelligence probably lack of mm -hmm. of some of your clients and i don't say that to be insulting but it's the reality of it right because mm -hmm. they're being influenced by the surrounding right mm -hmm. so really you're representing this one from a paperwork standpoint but you're really representing the crowd because mm -hmm. that crowd has an impact on the daughter, the son, and which is nothing wrong because you want the best interest for your child, your nephew, your cousin, whomever that is. But mm -hmm. at the same time, you don't tell that doctor, this is how I want you to do the surgery. Use that scalpel. Mm -hmm. And I don't use that one. I want you to use that one there. Or yeah. you don't let the doctor yeah. do the mm -hmm. surgery, right? Mm -hmm. You don't tell a dentist, no, 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 I don't, don't use that one. Use that Novocaine. You hired yeah. me to be yeah. the professional, right? So just so, so let me do that, you know? And that's something, I don't want to get off track here, but that's well, something won't. brokers who, when you're taking on new client, a part of your consultation is kind of finding out where they're at mentally. Having that mm -hmm. conversation, I'm, I'm, I want to be your professional. Very mm -hmm. transparent. We're going to do things by the book, but let me do my thing. I got you. And mm -hmm. I'm going to make you mm -hmm. 
conscious aware of every move I make, but let me be in the driver's seat. So the worst yeah. thing I think brokers can do is sit in the passenger side and have the drive, have the buyer drive. Oh, man, it's a recipe for disaster. Let yeah. me drive. You sit in the passenger mm -hmm. seat and you see mm -hmm. where we going. Because yeah. you hide exactly. me. But anyway, I exactly. digress. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because you, you spot on with that. Because mm -hmm. you're right. Oftentimes that is is what happens and they don't have the experience. And then when you end up, quote unquote, um, bottlenecked on the highway somewhere or another, well, you let them drive, you know, mm -hmm. you let them drive. So they chose the path of direction. They went this place when you knew that wasn't the right place. You knew y'all should have got off on this exit, but you sat there quietly. Now you in rush hour traffic, so to speak, stuck. Oh, they're going to call you then. <laughs> oh, trust yeah. me. They're going to say, hey, listen, uh, I remember you said, oh, this is, and it's like, you again, I tell all the brokers and myself, always take the high road, right? You, you know, they dead wrong, right? But you yeah. still take the high road because at the end of the day, you know, we want we want them to accomplish the goal. We also want the referral. You know, we ultimately yeah. we need the business, right? So mm -hmm. definitely, and, and, and it happens. And, and But I do believe sometimes you don't want them to hit the wall, but they got to hit that concrete a little bit to realize, look, I'm the professional here. Like they got to realize like, okay, well, who, who really is a professional? Like you, you hired me to do it. I told you this was going to happen. Like I kind of seen this. Why? Because I've seen this movie so many times, right? It was different characters, different actors in the movie, but I've seen this play before. So I kind of have an idea how to strategize it, strategize it. You know, yeah. sometimes we say it, say it like this, man. Sometimes they got to get the head busted to the white meat. To the white meat, brother. I wanted to say it, I swear. I was going to say it, but I didn't want to get too graphic. <laughs> Where they really have to do. And for those of you who don't understand what that means, hitting your head, you hit it hard enough, yeah. you're going to see some of that white come down with a little bit of blood because you wasn't quite paying attention to the person you hired. Let them do their thing. Now, I will say, and I'm going to play devil's advocate, you do have some experienced agents and brokers out there. Whereas yeah. though the brokerages, the groups, the teams that they're part of, it's not giving them proper training. So if you see or sense that buyer, there's nothing wrong with having a nice, intelligent, polite conversation right and put the attitude to the side right yes <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly exactly so mike look we've ran through oh um, man i know we've been running brother you know i'm a host oh. of the show brother i can talk <laughs> well look here and there's nothing look here i love it i love it but i want to make sure that our listeners get your contact information okay perfect perfect, perfect. um okay. so if you don't mind rattle off how people can get in contact with you to learn more Okay, well, I would say this, like you see right behind me, I'm the host of the Headley Group Real Estate Show, where we highlight entrepreneurs and we talk about real estate. If you're a broke agent, to show you that you can make money outside of selling the house. That's why I have different guests on it. But they can reach me at, well, pretty much everywhere on social media, but it's the Headley Group Real Estate Show. We prefer YouTube. You can see all of our shows. We on Instagram, uh, Apple, Google, anywhere you can find us. The Headley Group Real Estate Show. And by the way, and I got to plug it too, if you need a broker, in the North Carolina area. Hey, listen, the Headley Group can help out. And we love to do referral to this brother right here. We don't mind. Look here. No worries. No worries. We're looking forward to it, my man. So, look, as we wrap up today's show, man, Mike, is there anything else that you want to drop as a nugget, as a jewel, if you will, for our listeners today? Whether okay. it be investor, entrepreneur, whoever it is, what nuggets you, what nugget you got for them today? I would say, and this is for a professional personally, and I know it's so cliche. People say, oh, I hear that all the time. Like we we hear it logically, but we don't truly understand. You tapped on it early, brother. Mm -hmm. Your mindset. Let me mm -hmm. tell you something. When you can manage your mindset, you winning. Mm -hmm. You are literally winning. And the reason why I say that is there's a lot of variables playing to come into place. And we the right person at the right time. And you could have had a nice, nice commission that allowed you to get X. And I say that based off of what I've built here and continue to build here, it came from an attitude like, excuse my language, brother, but but I sometimes I use a little profanity. I don't give a damn what somebody think about me. That's the concept I got to have. And it's not coming from a sense of arrogance, but it comes from a sense of I believe in me. I believe in me more than anything. Mm -hmm. And when you have that attitude, you're breaking barriers. So I'm saying have mm -hmm. that approach. If you don't have it, go get it. Work on that. Listen to podcasts, listen to his brother right here, YouTube videos, listen to books. You are, mm -hmm. as they say, the plug. You the plug. Yeah. Not my friend, yeah, not yeah. my cousin, not my mother. I don't need authorization from nobody. I don't need approval from nobody. Once you give yourself approval, you winning. You winning. Yeah. I'm a prime example of that. But anyway, I digress. No, no, you spot on, my man. So, Mike, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for being a part of Exit Strategy Radio Show family. Man, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. 
and we thank you for your time today. For our thank listeners, you. guys, look, y'all reach out to Mike. Y'all make sure y'all touch in, y'all tag in, y'all make sure y'all tune in for his show because he drops some jewels and nuggets all the way throughout all the time. He makes sure that he delivers real content. He makes sure that he has a positive impact on the community. That's what we all are. We're all community. We're all family. In closing, for our listeners, guys, as you know what I always say, guys, you know what I do, you know how I do it, and y'all know that I mean it. I love you. I love you. I love you. And we're going to see you guys out there in those streets.